Uh, people in the town offices, please unmute so we can hear you. You want everybody to talk all at once? <laughs> I'd like to be able to hear their answers. Uh, oh, there's speaker. All right, let's uh, get going. Thanks everyone for joining us this evening. It's uh, June 13th, 7.04 PM, Town of Bristol Select Board meeting. Call the meeting to order. At 704. Uh, review agenda for addition, removal, or adjustment of any items. Anything about? Not that I know of or can remember. Oh. <laughs> two different things. Uh, okay. Uh, number two, overview of Zoom meeting operation. I'm sure everyone's <laughs> very familiar with all this. Rules for participation. Mute your microphones, please, and be recognized by myself, the chair, if you wish to speak. Item two, public forum. Five minutes per person. Anything that's not on this evening's agenda, if someone wants to bring up uh, and talk about it. Seeing no hands or waves or anything of any kind, I'll move on. Uh, department head round table. Meredith, let's start with the recreation department. What's going on with you? All right, well, um, some exciting things. Uh, We've got a swim program. It's happening, but it's only happening one week so far. Um, it's going to be July 11th through July 15th. I've got a f possibly guaranteed two swim instructors um, could really use a third. But with that, we are offering a certification class June 20th, 21st and 22nd at MAUSD. So um, hopefully we'll get some folks from there that would be interested in, in teaching swimming. Now the certification class is for swim instructors? For for lifeguarding. For Life just lifeguarding. Nice, yeah. um, it's just nice to have that if you're gonna teach, um, it goes hand in hand. So we're pretty excited about that. Today we had a training day with our uh, summer assistant counselor, Zoe, and it was phenomenal. We walked around the, the park, we did, um, some bike drills because this week starting Wednesday is our three day girls camp. And then we go right into summer all the way until August 19th. So um, pretty busy this, this summer. Uh, what we'll end up doing is we'll be working out of the hub uh, and we'll be checking our messages. And then after the camp, I'll swing into the office and, and follow up with any details that I need to, to do for the summer. So we're pretty excited um, that uh, that things are coming together and all our programs are pretty much full. Great. It looks like you were doing some mountain bike training today when I saw you. Yep, that was Zoe. So we were working oh, that on was Zoe. Yep, bike body uh, positioning. I just want to build the foundation for her. She's not um, a big mountain biker, but I think she already she had a great time. So I think she'll become a great mountain biker by the end of the summer. Fantastic. And I know that we're one of the items on the agenda is the uh, the job posting. I know that went out. I don't know if you've had anyone interested in that. It's only been a short amount of time, obviously. Yeah, and I'll just wait until we uh, want my turn and I'll dive into sure. that. Okay. Can do. Uh, any questions for Meredith? Meredith, why only one week of swimming? I can't find people. I can't find people. I, that's the only time that I have a lead swim instructor. Hmm. That's a bummer. Yeah, I tried to yeah. have All right. Okay. Thank you very much, Meredith. Uh, town clerk, Sharon, what's happening with you? Uh, what's happening with me? Yeah. Uh, next week, we're going to be getting our ballots for the August election. So I'll. Uh, We've already got some requests for absentee ballots. And then after that, we'll get the ballots for the Starksboro vote. So there will be a state election plus a local election. And we are still looking at people for the assistant position. And what's the status behind... on what's the status on the assistant position? I know you had a couple of couple of uh, candidates that you were looking at. Well, we made an offer on Friday and she came back with significantly higher 
information, which we're going to discuss later, hopefully in executive session. Okay. And in terms of that Starksboro vote, is that the school vote you're talking about? Yes. Okay. Yes. The other four towns have to agree to it. That's for the elementary school to leave. Yes. MAUSD. Yes. Just okay. like Lincoln did. So. Yep. Okay. Anything yeah. else, Sharon? Uh, no, we have a lot of land records here and just everyday questions and stuff going on. And the office is closed tomorrow. Is that correct? Morning. Tomorrow morning. Yes. Yep. Okay. I'll be in in the afternoon. Okay. Any questions for Sharon? All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Bruce, Bristol Police Department. Good evening. So in the last week or so, we received reports of bike bicycles being stolen from Church Street and Maple Street. The one on Church Street has been recovered, but the others have not. So if anybody has any information, contact us. Um, it's also a good time to remind people that uh, if you don't have your serial number uh, written down for your bike to do that in a picture would be great. And secondly, we're working on setting up our phone system to have an automated. So similar to the town office, when you call, you will not get a live body to answer the phone. I'm sure you may have read or heard about the shortage of state police dispatchers. They do assist us in answering our phones. So we are working with them as well as the other agencies that are working with them alleviate um, some of those unnecessary calls. Good time to remind people, if you have an emergency, dial 911. Okay. That's all I have. All right, any questions for Bruce? Okay. Uh, Anthony, Treasurer's Office. Hi guys, uh, updates that I have. Waiting to hear back on um, Valerie reached out to the auditors and we're waiting to hear back when we should be seeing a draft of the audit. Um, I've also been working on more grant work, trying to build up our files uh, and just have them in a very consolidated area. Um, so we've just been working through that, going through our chart of accounts to see what numbers we have available. Another thing that I've really been working on, um, the governor recently passed a grant, um, the homeowners assistance program, uh, the federal government gave the state of Vermont some ARPA funding and Governor Scott, as of January, created a grant in order to help Vermont homeowners uh, with pandemic assistance. So what's it, what it is going to look like is I've just um, onboarded with the state. We're going to be sending out um, some letters with delinquent taxes this cycle. That's going to provide more information for people that have delinquent taxes or delinquent utilities or anything like that. And they just are going to need to fill out a couple things online to see if they qualify. And then, um, an onboarding agent will then work with us in order to uh, get people back on track. The grant is designed for people that are delinquent in their taxes and utilities and trying to catch them up due to the hardships that people had gone through during the pandemic. Uh, and let's see here, it's through the Vermont Housing Finance Agency. So it's not, that necessarily the state that's doing it it's just an arm of it that they're working in partnership with so i'm getting that in the works so we should hopefully be seeing um those letters go out within the next week so do you does the town reach out to everyone who's delinquent on the has, tax report yep yep it will be going out with our uh delinquent notices that we will be sending out Okay. Well, I mean, that sounds very positive. Hopefully we have a lot of people qualify for that and get assistance. Yeah. It would be great. Yeah. The parameters are pretty broad. So, I mean, that'll be in the letter as well. So 
it, it looks very promising. Great. That's excellent. Um, in terms of the audit, I know it's taken a little bit of time and I'm not sure, I can't remember in terms of what last year's took and Val, maybe you can answer this in terms of, is this taking longer than, than it normally has because of a new firm that we're using or is it just, you know, I'm not sure what, why, why we're, we're waiting so long for this. I don't remember when the last year's audit was completed, but it took a long time too. Okay. All right. And so in terms of improving that, it's, it's up to us if we can to be able to get information, you know, together quicker to be able to get it through. I, I mean, and given that it's a lengthy process, it just, the only way that we can sort of make it quicker is just to have everything as, as soon as we can. To be Absolutely. To I think uh, this year's process has um, informed us about how to be better prepared for the next one, not just because of how we've been doing things, but uh, in terms of what the new auditor is looking for and expect to have and in what format and, and that kind of thing. And so I think we will be much more efficient next year. Not that we weren't efficient this year, it's just finding and, and putting things together. Yeah, and I, and I wasn't... Year. Yeah, I wasn't saying that. It was just sort of just sort of right. un understanding the process. I mean, we were, it was uh, two <laughs> two things that we were working on in terms of a new auditor that we were using, and right. also Anthony was a new treasurer for the town, and so it's that was a big of those things and that learning. Yeah. So hopefully, yeah, with with the knowledge that Anthony brings to this, as well as the experience he's had, right. he should be able to sort of like just breeze through this next year. Well, and, uh, well yeah. not not to um, uh, put too much of emphasis on this, but uh, just if for if for some terrible reason uh, Anthony's not in the seat next year and somebody else is, that the system is set up so that it's more easily walked into. Right. Uh, it's it's uh, almost turnkey, hopefully. That's okay. what that's how we're trying to set it up. Great. That sounds excellent. All right. Any more, Anthony? No, that's it. Um, and I guess I'll just say uh, with the audit, um, they focused in on a lot of things that the prior auditor had not focused on. So we needed to build up that kind of infrastructure. And then because they're a brand new auditing firm, they needed pretty much all of our history yeah. in the last like five years. Okay. So. Okay. Super. Thank you. Any questions for Anthony from the board? Okay. Terrific. Uh, let's do, I know that Jill's going to talk a little bit later, but let's have Jill, uh, from the water department, give a little update. There it is. Hey. I had a Hello. question. We were muted. <laughs> I just wondered if Valerie was alluding to something we should know about. <laughs> no, no, not at all. No. I mean, in terms of Anthony being in the seat, if, if anything, he's, he's going to be there for a long, long time because he bought a house in Bristol. That's yeah. what I thought. I thought yeah. we had put an offer on a house. Yeah. 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 yeah our closing is the 6th of July. And yeah. honestly, we cannot um, be happier to move. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're counting down the days. Well, awesome. Mount, Mountain Terrace is a bit rough and tumble. So hopefully mm -hmm. you'll get used to that. Yeah. Well, watch your back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. How's it going with the water department? Uh, we are in the middle of a full water read, so it's been um, full, full, full speed ahead. Um, just slowed down by the by the gun, only lasting six and a half hours. So we were ready to go for another hour and a half and hit four hundred today, and it died. So it's like, darn it. <laughs> so cranking away. We'll be back out there tomorrow. I don't generally start till eight in the morning because I don't want to. I don't want to catch people while they're taking a shower. Um, because it is going in people's yards and going up to the edges of their houses. And I don't know what window goes where. And I certainly don't look in the windows, but people get creeped out if you're in their yard too early. So I usually start at eight and I stop around four or four thirty because again, people are starting to have time with their families and it just gets really awkward being in their yard. So uh, back at it again tomorrow. We'll probably get to, I'm guessing about 580 tomorrow and then have the last maybe 80 or so to wrap up on Wednesday afternoon. Terrific. So water reads almost done. The uh, consumer confidence report, which is the water quality report will go out with this set of, set of bills. And the other thing it will give us is the, uh, it'll give us quarter, quarter four 
billing so that you'll have a more accurate understanding of what your income is for your fiscal year. Okay. Any questions for Jill? All right, moving on. Uh, Brett is unable to join us from the fire department. He sent a letter along. I've read the last couple. Would anyone like to volunteer to read this one? Or would you like me to read it? Seeing no volunteers or hearing no volunteers. <laughs> I'll read this. Uh, unable to join us for this evening's meeting due to a personal conflict. He's asking us to share the following updates. Fire station flagpole project. I am pleased to report that the installation of the new flagpole at the town's fire station is complete. The American flag hangs on the new 30 foot flagpole and the Vermont state flag and fire service flag are displayed on the two 25 foot flagpoles. This project was a collaborative effort between the firefighters, local businesses, American Legion, logistical support provided by the Department of Public Works and our select board. Thank you to all who made this possible. I would like to call out Pike Industries for donating three yards of bluestone, Joseph P. Carrera and Sons for donating the concrete, Nathan Busca excavating for the use of his excavator, the American Legion post number 19 for their financial contribution of $800 to make, it our, make up for our shortfall, post 19 also donated uh, a five by eight American flag that is a required size for a 30 foot, 30 foot flagpole. I want to extend my sincere thanks and appreciation to the entire Bouvier family for making the memorial funds, $2,500, in the names of Jim, Eric, and Hub, Jeffrey, available for this special project. Lastly, I would like to give a big shout out to the Bristol firefighters who unselfishly gave up the better part of a weekend these past two weeks to do this work. Thank you, Joel Bouvier, project foreman, Mark Bouvier, Peter Bouvier, Jim Whitcomb, Peter Heffernan, Lance Perley, Terry Farr, Kevin LaRose, James, I'm going to pronounce this wrong, Rabido, uh, and Peter Coffey. Uh, Independence Day holiday. The fire department is looking forward to taking part in the upcoming 4th of July parade. It has been three years since we've been able to walk uh, as a group in this great town tradition. The fire department will be providing standby coverage for the fireworks display on July 3rd. Greenwood Cemetery Water Tank. The fire department continues to support and request uh, of the select board, the filling of the Green Greenwood Cemetery water tank. The fire department has filled this tank twice this uh, twice so far this season. Calls for service. As of June 13th, 2022, the fire department has been dispatched and responded to 68 calls for service incidents. The following is a breakdown of incidents by type. Building fire, five. Medical assist, assist EMS crew, 15. Assist uh, Vermont State Police with search and rescue, one. Motor vehicle crashes, 15. Hazardous material incident, 2. Alarm system and smoke detector activations, 11. Carbon monoxide incidents, 3. Power lines down, 2. Unauthorized burning, 4. Dispatched and canceled en route, or en route, 2. Forest fire, approximately 3 acres behind Bristol Pond, 1. Uh, filling Greenwood Cemetery water tank, 2. And then finally, hand sanitizer. Remember that the fire department took delivery of a pallet of Bar Hill hand sanitizer from the Caledonia Spirits on May 10th. The product is packaged in four ounce bottles and there are 24 bottles in a case. As of today, uh, that's 523, the inventory is 11, or sorry, 100 cases remaining from the original 184. If anyone would like to take advantage of this free sanitizer, please call 453-3201 and leave a voicemail message. This is, the non, this is the fire department non-emergency number or email bristolfiredepartment at gmail.com to make arrangements to pick up. End of report. All right, uh, anyone I've missed in terms of departments? I don't think so. Looking at the list here. Nope, oh, I think we're good. Okay, so we'll move on. Eric, did we hear from Eric? Eric? Oh, I'm sorry. Anything? He's always hiding in the back there and I can't see him on the camera. Eric Coda for the Public Works Department. You are the last one. Oh, yeah. I did. Yeah, I took care of it. Did you? Oh, here's yeah. He's right. IT. He's right. hey. <laughs> so, we got the new guy started today, Brett Bassett. Um, started today work. I, we uh, showed him around the roads, turnaround spots, the pit that we use. We did some maintenance on the mower and the tractor um, and the excavator. Uh, we started our roadside mowing, our first pass. Intersections are all been mowed, but we're starting the first pass on the mowing. So about the update. Okay. Thank you very much. 
Any questions for Eric? All right, I have one. Um, I know last, I think it was last year, we had a couple of residents talk about the uh, grasses by the, uh, just before Basin Street along that stretch of sidewalk. Is there an intention to mow that or strim that this year? I know it was sort of builds up and gets encroaches onto the sidewalk and they were asking whether that could be mowed. Is that on your schedule? Yeah, we do it every year. Okay, great. They must have caught it when it was hadn't been strimmed yet. Okay, super. All right, let's move on to regular business. Uh, review and approval of updated recreation department coordinator job position. Um, all right, so I believe you all received the job description um, that we that Taylor and I updated. And pretty much what the big thing that you'll notice is that we are changing the the wording assistant director to coordinator. Uh, Taylor and I believe that that's a better fit for what actually is happening between the two departments. Um, another thought behind it is um, when you think director, you think maybe the pay scale would be more than what we have stated for um, that position. So coordinator kind of fits well with the, the rate of pay that we're going to suggest. So if you notice, uh, it says anywhere, I believe it says 18 to $20. Yep. Um, with what's going on and trying to find folks for fulfilling this job position, uh, we believe that is the act. You know, that's a, an accurate amount that that somebody would be interested um, to do. And and the fact that it's a town position, so you know, we really got to mention like benefits that go along with this. Um, I think it, I was talking to Sharon today, and it's amazing. You know, when you add up the the benefits that the town does, it, it does add a few dollars extra. You know, it's not cold, hard cash that you're getting, but the benefits are, you know, the health insurance, um, the Beamers. So I'm hoping that the select board uh, has taken a look at the new title for the job position and agree. And if you have any questions, let me know. For the, do we want more detail on the benefits package or is just a competitive benefits package uh, is included? Is that enough? I'm not, I don't know what we do for other job positions or is, this, is that just standard language? I think it's standard, but you know, honestly, I don't know what um, we've asked for the other departments. Val, do you know? Is it usually just just a simple simple? In, in the ad, it's usually <laughs> mentioned as a as a competitive benefits package. Okay. Okay. Yes. I, I guess I guess we'd have the person inquire mm -hmm. if they're applying. Okay. Um. So along Meredith, along with the title, um, in terms of the position summary or the duties, any any changes there from the from the previous position? Yeah. So we in prior it was the job description was very um integrated and so this time we set separate bullet points for the rec and for the hub um within the rec we did highlight a little bit more about parks job details um added in that we would like this person to you know once a week go around to the uh, parks and and do a check-in and then also be part of the community or the committees that are involved with the parks. Um, so this th this covers in terms of because I know Alex's position sort of it, it changed over time. This is a, a fairly good capturing of what he was doing up until he he uh, left the role. Yeah. So uh, with Alex, you know, we had added a little bit more parks to it. Um, that was something that we were missing and that fit well with uh, his schedule. So we want to continue that. We don't want to, you know, have started something so great and then just cut it off. So we will, you know, usually it was Fridays. That was the, the park day. Um, depending on how we're looking at the schedule, it will be, it can be Friday, it can be Monday. Um, one other thing that uh, Taylor and I discussed was shifting the time. So we're able to work with a nine to five or a 10 to six. 
Now, if we do a 10 to six, that actually helps out the hub um, and allows the, that person to help close with the other person that's at the hub. And with the, the you know, the, like just how the hub is working these days with more chill, more kids in the hub, um, it's something that we want to consider. So okay. we're giving it as an option. Okay. Yeah. And I see you've added in the, the attending conservation committee meetings. I know that Alex was a big part of that. So that's good that, that to see that in there. Yeah. Cause you know, we are the parks, recs and arts. So we want to try to get all that. And so the next, the next thing is really, we want to try to focus on the arts part and try to bring um, more activities into the, into the Holly hall. So okay. that's one that's, I think that's part of the pie that we're kind of missing. Okay. Uh, any questions from the board on the new position? Just Meredith, I apologize. I didn't read it all, but um, Alex was very involved with the ash tree Emerald ash borer committee with the new, the new position still have some input on that. Yeah. So uh, I would really like that to continue. The reason being it's, it's kind of important and it affects our parks. So, um, having this next person be involved with that just kind of keeps everything moving on. In the other business section of the agenda is uh, yeah. a copy of the minutes of the recently formed tree committee, which evolved out of the Emerald Ash Borer Committee. Because the, the, Emerald, the Emerald Ash Borer Committee, their work is pretty much done. And so now it's, it's, it's ongoing now as a tree committee. And the, the minutes from their recent meeting uh, capture a lot of what Mer Meredith is talking about. Is Val, is the, what's the official name? Is it just the Bristol Tree Committee? At the moment, yes. <laughs> okay, um, so I'll, I'll work to create a, uh, a page for that on the town site if it's, if it's official now. And because I, I saw the minutes in there, and I thought that's great that that's that's I wasn't wasn't sure what was happening with that group. So it's great to see that active. Um, At so the I'll moment, it's, it's an ad hoc group, so it hasn't yeah. been. It's not official. Uh, okay. It has, doesn't have the select board blessing, but okay. uh, uh, that's the direction it's going. Okay, so let's let's move towards that then. I think if people are interested, um, and then we can make that official and and get the details on the page so people can find that. Excellent. Uh, any other questions for Meredith regarding the job position? Do we want a uh, vote to approve this? A motion to approve would be good because if, if you notice on other job descriptions at the bottom, it's it says the date of when the select board approved it. Okay. I'll move. Second. All right. We have a motion to second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Raise your hand. All those against? Nay. <laughs> motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Meredith. Thank you, Meredith. Did Peaker Good luck make with that. Motion and Joel seconded. Peaker did, and Joel. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then, so we can, with that approved, we can get that out on all the different platforms. And so, what we, we're doing our usual. Are we going to use? What else are we using in terms of a broader reach? I know that Indeed seems to be Indeed. Is that right? Yeah, has been, yep. been successful for other things. We'll we'll do that. Right. The town will do that. Right. So uh, the ad is already out, and uh, so the the next step is to replace the draft uh, job description with the, the adopted one on the website and make reference to it. And I'm I'm not sure uh, how far the rec department went with all of the ad advertisements. So far, it's only in the Addison Independent and 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 Front Porch Forum, but I don't I don't know that it's been posted to Indeed yet. Okay. Yeah, that seems like a fairly decent platform to be able to get absolutely uh, applicants. So, okay. All right, excellent. Thank you very much, Meredith. Moving on, item two: review and approval of the Public <laughs> Works Assistant Foreman job position. <laughs> yeah, as I mentioned in my notes, uh, the previous two assistant foremen were were promoted from within, so they already knew. What, what they needed to do. So a job description just never evolved from that. But now that we're hiring from outside, it, it dawned on me that, oh, geez, we need a job description. So uh, I basically adapted the one that's posted online uh, from, the, from the foreman's job description, but um, also made it short, made it clear that it was also, that the person's also responsible 
I mean, pr primarily responsible as a public works employee with additional duties to support the the uh, the foreman. Okay. Um, do we want to add in the um, uh, benefits package? It doesn't. I don't see that mentioned in this. I know that it says salary, but I think benefits package. It's you know get be let's be standardized across all of our job positions. Uh, this that usually is uh, shows up in the advertising for the oh, okay not the job description oh okay got it yeah yeah are we posting a salary for this position um well it's something to talk about <laughs> um i i wasn't sure what parameters to put in so i just put in commensurate with education and experience I mean, we we've previously talked about what what that amount might be. It's whether we want to put that as a public thing. And I don't know what, what other towns are doing uh, if they're giving a particular particular number from from this to this. Um, many do, uh, especially well, um, many do. Yeah. Okay. Board, how do you feel about putting a number in there? I think we left it out intentionally. So that we'd have more people apply that's, and then they would well that's what i was wondering yeah. did we leave it out for that purpose right. or that's what we did the last time okay okay so so keep it off now with the hopes of a broader range of applicants after settle we can we can work it down a little bit and if we get the ideal candidate we can move it up yeah okay all right uh, I'd entertain a motion then to approve this, Val, is that correct? Yes, please. Okay. Second. Who, is, who, who did the motion? Same two. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye, raise your hand. All those against, nay. Thank you. And it can always be amended too after we gain some experience with it. Motion carries. Great. Thank you. All right. Moving on. Uh, let's see here. Oops. Okay. Item three Water and Sewer Commission consider proposed three year service contract from Vermont Utility Management Services or VTUMS. Uh, and <laughs> was, that, was that a motion? What? <laughs> this the the delay on Zoom is cutting out the humor here. <laughs> All right, what have we got? Val and Jill. Now I know that Val, you mentioned the the numbers are slightly different. We want right. To uh, I, sure. I attempted to provide a comparison of the the, the rate the the rate schedule between the current one and the proposed one, but but apparently I misjudged some lines and other things. So um, if you really if you want that information, Jill uh, has an updated table that we can share a screen if you want to look it over, or okay. if you're if you don't need if you don't if you feel you don't need to get into that level of information then you, if you have other questions about the proposed contract. I went through all of the equipment numbers with Jill because I caught that when I was looking at it and I think the rates are are very comparable to what's going on if not a little low so I don't unless somebody has questions I see no reason to visit it. Okay that sounds good. But thank you Jill for providing it. The updated no, I, current information. No problem. And I think the biggest change besides the fact that the prices are shifted in the wrong column is that the larger machine is actually a 22,000 pound machine. It's not just 2,000 pounds bigger. It's a big one. So the one that I have listed as 12,000 is really 22? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cheapers. So I did send you um, a revised agreement. I listed it wrong at 12. It's really 22. I put a one instead of a two. It's just, it's a much bigger oh. machine. So it's not like we're not going to move a ledge with it, but we're going to be able to dig the deeper water lines and do the larger projects with heavier pulls. So, so the 12,000 was actually in your draft. 
So I sent you a revision with it marked up so that it's 100% okay. accurate, but all the other price points that were just shifted and shifted in the wrong cell. Yeah. Everything else is, um, is correct in the agreement and in the revised spreadsheet that I sent over so you can see the percent increases. And our primary percent increases are just due to um, the rising cost of fuel and labor. Yeah. Which, uh -huh. We wish weren't so, <laughs> but they are. You know, the, the bigger machine is less per hour than the small machine. No, they. Uh, what happened is the second the second row that's the, that says twenty two to twenty five. Everything got shifted up a row, and it needs to go down a row. Yeah, this is this is correct. That's what it is right there. Okay. We didn't have the 22,000 pound machine until late last year. So this is our first year to be able to utilize it in Bristol. Uh, we're having to rent in moving it until our trailer arrives because it apparently takes a year to make a trailer. Um, and we just also got the tandem truck late last year because we have a new laborer that's uh, receiving his CDL in July. So we'll be able to move the bigger, move the bigger machines and respond to larger size leaks with a with a lot more reach. So, um, so previously you would you would rent the machine and now you own the twenty two thousand know, pounds. So what would happen is generally we would actually hire a larger contractor and spend you know like ten thousand dollars a day which is absurd. So we decided given that we had a couple other clients, including yourself that could utilize a larger machine when there really was an emergency, that with the new person on staff, with the, the higher level CDL and being able to acquire the machines late last year at a good price to just set it up. Great. Yeah. So we don't use our own machine that the highway so department we used to. So what used to happen was Kale was a fantastic operator and Josh was also quite good. Um, they were awesome. So we'd work with them and then highway became short staffed. Couldn't cert could most certainly not have an operator come in. Um, and we kind of saw that as we should just outfit ourselves. And if it's something you need, we'll provide it. And if it's something you don't need because highways fits back up, um, that's great too. Okay. Great. So we have, we have that option. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're having our, can you hear us? Yeah. We're having problems. I think with our, with the sound, with the sound. In terms of you hearing us or us hearing you. Us. There, there, there is, is a bit of a, a lag. There's a, there's a lag. Yeah. There's a delay in terms of like, you say something, we don't hear it and then it catches up. Um, so it's it's like I, we don't hear the very first thing that you guys are saying, I think. Yeah, it gets chopped off. Yeah, for whatever reason. Did someone have a question? Joel both have questions. Not okay. Right. Her's got to answer, Joel. Joel. Okay, Joel. I'd like to, uh, at least when you know you're going to do a digging, you know, a couple of days in advance, that Eric's notified and if he can supply a machine and an operator, that only helps us out. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, help beat them, but it does help us out um, paying for our machine. And our second question I have, Jill, I have three bills for the um, in front of me, and I'm not going to give the amount and make them public. It is public record now, but I'm not going to do it. Um, there's a couple of, here it says the excavator on three of the manholes. Mm -hmm. Is that I'm with an operator? Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, I'd like to discuss later the, I think a couple of the bills are wrong. Okay. Um, I, I'll discuss that later with you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other questions on the contract for VTOMS? Make a motion. We accept it with the changes. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? The three-year extension to yes okay i'll second okay thank you uh any further discussion 
Hearing none. Joe? Uh, on your bills here, you've got a dollar a mile uh, for the one ton, but I don't see the one ton charged, but I don't see the, the mileage charge on the contract either. So should that be included? I suppose we should put that on there. Joel, are you suggesting that um, the the invoice, the bottom line, should be changed, or that more information should be provided on the invoice? Well, I guess if we're, the invoice says a mileage charge, but it's not in a contract to pay the mileage, I don't see it here, be previous or now. And they should get mileage. There's no doubt about it. But but is that considered the one-ton truck for? so much an hour here, $80. That's not in the invoice either. So there's Jill, how, how would you propose doing that? Uh, I would say, I don't, I'll have to look at the invoicing to just kind of see what makes the most sense. You're gonna charge mileage, let's say one ton, one ton, truck fee is this plus mileage right if that's what you do instead of having a separate line instead of is it is it line. is it plus mileage or is it that's why the hour that's what i'm asking it's usually just by the hour but i think what i did is i included his hours oh going going there is part of the the hours on the labor right so then i just put a mileage charge because he was going to south burlington and back Okay. Yeah. I've got the three. That's what I'm looking at, Joel, and that's why I asked the question. I don't see the charge for the truck, but I see the mileage. But the charge of the truck is in with the labor from the 22 hours. Yep. yep. Yeah, so it's just mileage because it's ridiculously expensive to put fuel in the diesel vehicle right now. Oh, yeah. Okay. So do we need to, can we, the motion that's on the table is that we are okay to run and approve that, or do we want to wait for any other changes? Well, the contract is different from the invoicing. Okay. Right. okay. I like contract, shouldn't it? That's what I'm just asking. Right. You would like to see that in the contract, Joel? Well, it just, I think it just needs to be clear whether we're getting charged mileage or mileage is part of the hourly fee for the one ton or the labor charge, whatever, however they're doing it. Okay. It just okay. Right. All right. Well, I'd, I'd say just, um, you know, as speaker stated with the motion, just with, with the changes with amendments, we'll just add that in there and make sure that that's done. I'm, I'm happy to just add in okay. that mileage charge could be added if necessary to offset fuel costs. Is that okay, Peaker? Fine by me. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, any further discussion? All right. All those in favor say aye. Raise your hand. Aye. Aye. All those against, nay. Motion carries. Thank you, Joe. You're welcome. Okay. Moving on, item four. Uh, Water Commission, new connection application for 81 Cottage Park. Yes, this is another one of those already installed situations that we encountered with um, 59 uh, Cottage Park. And uh, with the 59 Cottage Park uh, approval, we included a condition about um, uh, that, that all plastic piping, all future plastic piping needed to have uh, the wire tracer, uh, wire. Uh, tracer wire attached to it. But we, I subsequently learned through Jill that uh, it doesn't work after the fact that it has to, that the end, the one, the other end of the tracer wire needs to be connected to something in order for it to transmit what it needs to transmit. So that condition in this application uh, does, doesn't seem practical. But adding the condition that uh, that the water op operator be notified 48 hours in advance if anything happens or any repairs or any adjustments need to be made 
I think that would be uh, worthwhile to include. So this, this, this one, is, the connection is already at the... It's already in the cellar. It's okay. a place is already occupied. <laughs> First of all, it doesn't make any sense anyway, right? No, it doesn't. We didn't, we didn't quite know that with the other application. Unless you know, they dig it up, unless they dig it up. Yeah, there's one more lot there. That's, that line is already run as well, Jill? Correct. Yeah. So we're going to have one more of these. We're going to have one more of these. We're going to have to deal with this way. Again, and yeah. Forward, we're going to have to be on top of it. Right. Yeah, I think if we were to look at the lot and to like face the garage that's there, I think there's a total of four that have existing water lines that it would be really kind of silly to dig them up all the way. And if the tracer wire is installed, it needs to go from the curb box down all the way to the meter. Otherwise, you don't actually have a contiguous piece of wire, piece of metal to actually send the signal and find the line. So it was like if they we're just connecting the last five feet. You don't just put a wire on the last five feet. You're not, you can't actually clip onto it anywhere and trace it. So it would be wasteful at that point. Um, water curb stops south of the old barn at Cottage Lane. North. South, yes. Oh, right. those are, those are new. Yeah, those don't exist yet. Who to the south of the barn? Up by Francis, Francis Lane. Those are what I've seen them when I go by. Those have not run out to unknown places near a foundation yet, correct? There's not nothing. To my knowledge. What's that in here yet? Not to my knowledge. I think just the curbs are there. I don't think that there's a service line on the other side of them yet. So those, those will have tracer wires or they'll be held to pay. <laughs> or there'll be metal services, but you and I know. And now they know well, they can't. They should be well aware at this point. Right. Plastic or we tear it up. And, you know, we could have cured this a year and a half ago when I kept arguing copper only. Copper only. We are cheapening our system to save our customers money. And it's going to cost the town down the road, our water department, more money. For repairs, I believe. Maybe. And it just said copper, plain and simple. What we've been having for the last hundred years here, or galvanized, it's been copper from the 80s on, because I bought my house in 85 or 86, and they had to put a new copper line in it. Couldn't go galvanized. Now we're going backwards, I think. But I've got off my soapbox and I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and we also have it in our ordinance too, which we didn't have before. Those, those specifications in terms of tracer wire if you're using plastic. So we, we have the, the uh, ordinance to back us up in terms of if there are problems. And as you said, you know, if we have the ability to ask them to dig it up if they, need, if they don't do and follow the ordinance. Right. Respect okay. speaker comment later six months ago or so, if they have a plastic line and they have a pinhole leak, they'll know it because they won't have any pressure. I hope that to God that's true. And then we're going to say, maybe that plastic don't look quite so good anymore, does it? Uh, but I, I mean, I trust he knows what he's talking about, so I can live with it. So. I make a motion we approve the water connection. With the conditions? With the conditions, yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Motion from Peekers, second from Joel. Any further discussion? Uh, the, there are actually three conditions in my TA report that I recommend. The, the um, contacting VTOOMS, uh, 48 hours, that they be present to witness any installation or repairs, and payment of their connection fee. Okay. Okay. All right. Any other discussion on this? Has the connection fee been issued? Do they understand what they need to pay for that one? Sorry, yes. Is that yes. one of the ones? Okay. <laughs> yep. Great. The invoice right. has been issued. Okay, perfect. All right. All those in favor say aye. Raise your hand. Was there a second? There was, Joe. Thank you. All those against, nay. Motion carries. Thank you. All right. I'm going to stay tuned for the sidewalk one because it 
if there's digging, I just don't want any water services to get hit. <laughs> well, hopefully the digging is done. Um, we're not, we're not going to kick you out. You can stay as long as you want. <laughs> and, but that right, choice right. is yours. So this uh, is on uh, this on. is on the agenda um, because uh, during the storm on um, Thursday, uh, I had an opportunity to measure and w walk up and down this the new sidewalk and and I took some pictures of the the ponding that I could see, and uh, I talked with Eric about this and whether he it was a concern to him or whether it was something we needed to deal with with the contractor. And and uh, he felt that in some cases, or maybe all of them, that uh, just digging uh, in the green space a swale for the water to drain into would alleviate a lot of the problem. But he also suggested that I bring it to the board to get your opinion. So this is for, uh, I didn't get to do my item, item five, East Street Sidewalk Replacement Project, status review. Correct. Just so people know. <laughs> right. Um, Right, and I took so so Val took some pictures probably not soon after uh, I took pictures, uh, spotting the same thing just because it had been raining uh, and there was uh, quite a lot of water buildup. Um, mm -hmm. Not a lot on most of it was was in driveways that I saw. Um, uh, Richard and Gail Butts, their house is on the corner of East and Mountain Street. Uh, they had some water. It's it's the same as what happened before with their with the sidewalk that was there previously, and it's only because the road height is just higher than their driveway now. Um, and so it's just one of those things that the water doesn't have really anywhere to go. But hopefully Eric's suggestion of being able to sort of channel it off yeah. will help. Can I see the picture? And also completing some of the driveway restorations. Yeah. Do folks want to see the photos? Do you need to see them? Uh, I can put them on the screen. Here, I'll, Val, I've got a few I'll share. Hang on one sec. Okay. If this works. How's that? So this is this is Richard Butts's house right on the corner, and so I have one that's better than that. <laughs> you were you were out in the rain taking photos. I was in I, the I rain. I waited until the rain stopped. <laughs> uh, but well, that's a, yours is actually a good uh, indicator of how it, what it's going to look right a, after the storm. So where is that water going to go, Eric? That water right there is not, unless we dig up the driveway, is going to stay there. Majority of the water, other than that, can be ditched or pulled away between the road and the sidewalk down to the corner of Mountain Street where the drain is. So, west of this? Yes. That issue with the driveway versus that, that's the driveway. Right. right. Unless they wanted, unless you guys wanted to have them dig all the pavement out and repave the driveway. And that wasn't part of the deal. No. Right. Well, right. would that help though? Because the road is higher than a, his driveway anyway. You're still going to have it down. Well, if we'd raise it. Yeah, if you would have raised the sidewalk up, then it probably would have leveled the, the pavement to the road. That's what mm -hmm. um, But yeah, that right there, unless we dig back in <laughs> and make um some type of uh, a little indication or a swale right there to get it to the green spot is going to end up staying there until it dries up a deep set hole right there and by looking at it maybe an inch yeah that's a day after it stopped raining though because the what picture val had is like in his the other part of the yeah it's actually yeah. coming yeah green right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there were two pictures on on that property. One uh, closer to the corner, and then this one at the driveway. Yeah, I can do. Let's grab those, Val. Hang on. Oh, they're just small. Val, are they coming back to finish the? That's tomorrow. Uh, they, they had planned to do it on Friday, but something came up, so they are are planning to be here on Tuesday, and they are aware that cleanup is needs to be done. It won't be here. Yeah. yeah. That's a lot of water. Well, that's that's a heavy downpour too. Yeah. That's yeah. the driveway. On the side right there, the grass was holding it in, of course. Right. It's coming out of the sidewalk and then coming down the trench. But isn't this the one where we always he always has had the problem? Like didn't they dig the big they put it in rocks? Yeah. rocks? 
into the green space and it didn't work there yeah yeah he did he got permission to work in the right away and put stone in there. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But, yeah, but, but gotta, obviously it didn't work. You got to keep the stone open. You can't cover it with grass and expect it to go, you know. Quick. You're right. It's going to, the grass will help suck it up and then alleviate some of it. But you're going to always have pond in there if you don't have the stone exposed to be able to take the water. So, so, so if you ditch that, you can ditch it to the catch basin that's back on the corner. Yeah, I'm going to have to cut the pavement back to the catch basin because the pavement on boots's side is above the grass so yeah ian if you show if you show the first picture closer to the the corner that i think that shows your, your first picture yeah okay let's see the back side is higher and you shape it so you're saying here kind of like you did over by the cemetery you're going to belly it and then we just just reseed it reseed it belly and reseed it. okay and that should take yeah because you see it by the sign you see where that pile of dirt is yeah mm -hmm. that's holding the water back coming out into the sidewalk and then coming down to the drain so once they do their cleanup they'll take that pile of dirt away because that's part of their cleanup that'll help alleviate some of that water um... <laughs> to cut the trench into the, through the pavement into the drain, it should help significantly. Okay. By no means, but it definitely would help. All righty, and then we've got, um, so that's the water issue. I've got more, let's see here. You folks see that? This is, I went today, this afternoon. This is what's sort of left uh, there to clean up. Right. Is it, is it just one more day they have? Because I feel like there's a lot more. Yeah, it'll probably take longer than a day. Okay. Because most we'll of it, we'll most insist of on it, it, and there will be, need to be a final walkthrough before yeah. they get the balance of their payment. Yeah, we're doing most of it today. I think that you know, all in all, they they've been exceptional compared to what we've had in the past. Yeah. Considering that they're they're not local and they they have to travel to get here, they. They've stayed right on it. And I'll tell you that I received compliments uh, from at least two of the residents along the project there. Richard Butts was one of them. And also Kathy Smith expressed her appreciation and uh, her, her compliments to their workmanship and their uh, that they were easy to work with. And, she, and in her comments to me, she actually she said that we, she wished the town had more projects for them to work on. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, I think it looks really good. I think most of the water, you know, on, on a during a downpour, it's definitely pooling. But if uh, the next day, most of it, you know, yeah. had had evaporated and was gone, which is nice. There were a couple areas, but nothing nothing too severe, apart from Richard's driveway, unfortunately. And I think it's just it's been like that for a long time, just because of the nature of the road height. Um, yeah, they do have quite a lot of cleanup work left. Um, I definitely want to see them putting topsoil in as opposed to just trying to rake back the rock and stone at the edges now. All oh, right, uh, yeah. Here look here looks a little bit better than it does further down towards Main Street. Um, need to trim that tree there. That's sort of uh, kind of at your, my head height. Um, well, that that's a town issue. Right. Um, and so one thing they didn't do, which was in the RFP, was to do the um, the edging around it. They haven't gotten to that yet. What do you mean the edging around it? The stamping. It, it doesn't match any of our other sidewalks. There's a stamped edge along the concrete, which they didn't do. And it's and it seems like it's in the RFP. Um, unless I'm unless I'm misinterpreting what the RFP said. It talked about matching the existing. Do you mean yeah, the domes down in the corner? No. Oh. Um, the edges. Oh. It's, it's, it. call, it's called a certain thing, right? Where is it? I just looked at it today in the RFP. But if you told them to match, if you go and look at that sidewalk where the two join, I don't think it's on the side. No, it, it is. It is there. And But I, I think that's newer sidewalk. Potentially, they didn't do it, I think, because what they pulled out didn't have it. Um, 
and then but but the one the picture that I do have where it's the two I took that because it actually does have the stamping around the side I don't think it's a huge deal but it's just something to to be aware of they obviously missed that where was it it talks about what they used to do the oh here it is is, is this it the sidewalk shall be creased every five feet and edged continuously is that what that is or is that yeah. different than than that stamped that pushed edge? I, I don't know what it's called. Bullnose edge, or no? You're correct. It's it said it says edged. Okay. All right. So that's that's something they didn't do. I don't I don't think that we hold that against them. Um, you know, it's it's nice to have all the sidewalk match, and I don't think the edging affects the how decent the sidewalk is. So. And if you look, if you compare what the sidewalk looked like before, and those pictures are in the RFP, it's pretty uh, remarkable. <laughs> yes. No, I think I, I, I agree with uh, with Peeker. I think they did a very, a very good job. I was sort of, you know, watching it just because I lived near there when I was walking. Um, and it looks great, you know, and I think it's it's a good finish. I think the it's they're fairly decent with the slope. Um, and it's fairly clean and tidy. There's a little bit of mess that they sort of left. It'd be nice to have that cleaned up. There's a lot of stuff sitting in people's yards, you know, tucked away, but still there. Um, but yeah, they did an excellent job. So the, the, the well, that's good to hear. So, so what I'm sensing from the discussion is that the select board does not see any uh, particular thing that they need to correct other than the cleanup and the edging. I mean, uh, along the driveways and yards. Yeah. There's no way you're going to re-edge it. You can't edge no, it. but in, in terms of you don't want them. I'm hearing that you're not expecting uh, sidewalks to be replaced uh, to 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 change the elevation to deal with drainage. I think no, because they, I think they were told to mat, you have to match the driveways unless unless we're willing to pay to redo the driveways. Mm -hmm. The road edge of the sidewalk, right? Okay we raise that he would have to raise his driveway on the inside as well and, and I don't take a bar to yeah. Match yeah. yeah I don't I, mean, I don't see there's a lot that we can do to, to correct as speaker said they they did what they were supposed to do and I think it's just unfortunate this is it's just the road height now at, at some of those driveways I mean if it was a concern we should have took that into consideration when we had it bid and we'll have to realize the future if we've got a driveway that's holding water and we want to raise it it's i i assume that it's our responsibility to correct it not not pour a sidewalk two inches higher and tell the homeowner there you go <laughs> right <laughs> yeah no i agree and it's that's like a good point peaker in terms of for for a future sidewalk if we're if we're able to to be able to to walk the sidewalk and see it in, in different weather conditions, especially water and rain, and make a note of that to just see. Because I, I bet if we had seen this kind of condition before, we, we may have considered that if, if we can fix that drive to be able to match a little bit better. And, and we know we've got somebody foolish enough to go out in the rain and take pictures. So <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to get your steps in, so, you know. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I think I think it looks great. My my main concern with it is obviously the cleanup and the amount of stuff that's still sitting there, and then um, uh, proper proper topsoil usage instead of just trying to rake over gravel. I, I just don't want to what happened over at the fire station with some of that sidewalk and the edging. I don't want that that to happen here. Um, so obviously our our final walkthrough will determine if they if they do that correctly. It's in the RFP. Um, and also maybe using a, a decent type of grass. I talked to Gail Butz, uh, she's an avid gardener on, at her property right there. And she, the one concern she had with the grass that was put in when the road was done was that it was a very, it was kind of like, not crabgrass, but like kind of like, not, not a great, great seed to put down. And so I don't know if, if we have a choice to say, can you use this type of grass seed or, or if the contractor determines that. I, I think if we don't spell it out, they're probably going to use whatever's cheapest. Yeah. Grass seed, grass seed is like everything else. It's not cheap. Yeah. Hmm. Can we, do we have options to specify? Do, I don't know enough about grass seed. Um, are there recommendations from the board in terms of what we'd like to see there? I mean, it's, it's our green space, so. And people's yards on the other yeah. side. I, I don't know. I do know my experience with grass, you know, you're going to get 
crabgrass is going to come in quicker than anything else. That's going to give you your green, and then hopefully your seed will choke it out. But it, that doesn't always happen. I took okay. all the music. I have any green. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. So there's no thought of asking them for a little discount because they didn't edge the length of the sidewalk, just they did the cross edging every five feet. There's no. I, don't, I really don't think it's that critical. I think we bring it to their attention. I think we put it, emphasize that in the newer contracts for them again or anybody else that it will be edged, the length of it. Because you get that rounded nose, you'll get that cream out on the corner and it won't chip as quick. Right, because right now it says it'll match. Is that correct? Is that what we just determined? I'm not sure we well, want to use that word match existing sidewalks. <laughs> yeah, that could be dangerous. Yeah. Well, I believe the crap it's there. It does say that <laughs> when, when he read it, it says it'll be edged. And obviously they missed it because I don't, I don't think they, I, I don't think they consciously chose not to edge it. No, I think yeah. they missed yeah. it. Yeah. And it sounds like the homeowners were happy with them. We're happy with their work. Yeah. It's not the it's, it's like, not the end of the world. It's something it's, to bring up it's a, the next time we yeah. work with them. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, it's more more an aesthetic look, I think, than an actual uh I would not go without bringing it to their attention that it was okay. in the contract and let them sweat it a little bit, but <laughs> I don't see it as being a I don't see it as being a deal, a, a deal breaker or a, a deduction. I mean, it, um, it's so in, in, in terms of the grass seed, do we want to make a recommendation or do we want them to go with the cheapest thing that they can? Or, or can we come up with a recommendation? If, if, if one of us finds a recommendation, can, can we suggest that? Uh, grass seed? We're talking yeah. About You'd have to pay for it. Yeah. I mean, just, I think you just say, there must be a minimum of two inches of topsoil to, you know, to feather right. up. It's not in the. I'm gonna say if we don't have. It's not in there. We can't it. do it now, and you know, a conservation mix of grass seed. Okay. I don't yeah. conservation mix. When I'm reseeded, it takes a little longer, but it's a better grass seed at the end. I think. Okay. Isn't there like a residential type grass seed residential sure. mix? Residential mix. There's sun and shade. There's there's completely but shade. They're all two three dollars a pound now so yeah. it really uh well let's 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 go with conservation mix if we can and just since we're since we're going to be in contact with them anyway for this final wrap up and then i think joe's suggestion you know the the even though we don't have it in the contract that the minimum of two inches of topsoil because i i worry that that's not going to happen and we're going to go we're going to walk there and it's going to be seeding in you know rock and gravel but my question, if Eric's going down through and making a swale down through there, he's probably coming right close to the side off. That first section. Yeah, first section. That yeah. first section. So Eric should at least work with them and said, this first section is on us. No, I would I, or whatever. I tell them not to worry. Just clean up the, their, their mess, their dirt that they left in the media on there. Just clean that up and then leave the rest. Off the I'm not, just that one section. Just that one section. Okay. okay. All right. You got that, Val? Where? Huh? Are we supplying the topsoil? Yeah, we're supplying the material. So, you know, whether okay. they spread it, which is down. Okay, so just that first section from, from the, uh, the sign, maybe, right there. Okay. All right, any other discussion on this? Most of it, yeah. Nope. Like tomorrow with more. We'll do more tomorrow. You got more tomorrow, Peter? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. That'd be a note. I probably All right. Enough. All right. Let's wrap that up. Uh, next, where are we at? Eight twelve. Do, do, do. Um, item six: ratification of approval of MAUSD banner application for graduation event. So this is on the agenda to close the circle on on uh, an approval of the banner that's currently installed on West Street. <laughs> Um, they didn't plan ahead to get it uh, approved to the, by the select board in time um, previously, so went ahead and, and approved it retroactive. And for this approval to be retroactive, they they initially re requested um, perpetual 
uh, authorization, annual authorization. I mean, to, to just be in, per, in perpetuity, I guess. Um, and the, this approval was for one year only. Do we have concerns about perpetual? I'm sorry? So happened and they've already got the banner up. So if we vote this tonight on June 13th and the graduation was the, the 11th. So is this for next year? No, we're not. No. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so <we're> okay. <laughs> well, let's do it for next year. Let's help them out. <laughs> 2022 and 2023. Maybe. Um, is there a, is there a reason we wouldn't do it perpetual, given that it happens every year and it's it's the same thing? Um, there was a uh, Michelle. Maybe you can uh, reiterate what you you had the concern you raised. Or was that if things change, regs change, rules change, we can't just say you have it going forward without being considered mm -hmm. something change? Yeah. And we and can't, we can't change it, right? future boards. Probably future board teams. Yeah, right. right. Okay. All right. So they just need to get a little bit organized next year. <laughs> they should get it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, do we need a, a motion for that, Val, or consensus? Uh, let's see. What did I say here? Just to vote to ratify the approval. All right. We have a motion. Me and Daryl. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye, raise your hand. Yeah. All those against, nay. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, let's see. One, two, three. Uh, item seven, American Rescue Plan Act, ARPA funding update. Yes, this can be pretty brief. Uh, in my notes and online, there is a um, reference to a communication from the US Treasury. Uh, regarding updates to the reporting guidelines um, um, that they've issued. I haven't actually reviewed it yet because it just came, but um, so there's that to look at. And uh, the other update is just to report that the uh, focus groups from the ARPA advisory committee have all completed their, their, their sessions. I was inclined, I wanted initially to share with you some of the summary comments that came out of those focus groups, but I, I, I decided that would be premature. Uh, I'm, I'm holding back on um, the kind of discussions that they're having because I don't want that to to influence or, or color their presentation of their recommendations after the after their work is done. So I'm I'm, I'm not including that information just yet. Uh, and and the next steps are uh, they're going to be focusing how to uh, reach out to the broader community. And in what uh, in what ways? More than one way. And one of the ways that uh, they're they're uh, gravitating toward is uh, 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 a spaghetti supper. Uh, invite families, invite folks uh, to enjoy a free uh, spaghetti supper. Bring their kids with free childcare, and uh, have an evening of discussing the future of Bristol and how can this money be used to. Uh, in, to bring about the, the best future that people envision. So we haven't figured out the details for that. Other ideas are uh, um, a mailer, uh, like a short survey ma mailer out to households. Another idea is uh, uh, bringing that survey to uh, city, uh, sitting out in front of Shaw's or other local places, the churches, and try to intercept or invite people to respond to that survey at those times. Yeah, it's a it's a fairly healthy list, and and it, they all focus in different areas, which is good. Um, the spaghetti dinners, I think, is a great idea. I think Chris Perley came up with that. Uh, he's on the committee. Um, he likes to cook. And he likes to cook. <laughs> I don't know if he's going to cook for how many people might come. Yeah, so that that one would be maybe one have one done at the school, and then maybe another done uh, at the fire station. Try to capture again different uh, offer childcare with one perhaps and not the other. Trying to figure out how how we can get as many different people coming to these meetings. Um, the mailer, I think is a great idea, sort of, you know, they're working on designing that, be able to send that out and send your information back in, as well as, you know, numerous posts on Front Porch Forum to be able to capture public ideas. Um, right. And we've had a lot of public public comment and suggestions already that Val sort of put together, um, but obviously they want more and obviously, and whatever, and the information that came out of the focus groups as well, a lot of information came out of those. And so it's just sort of trying to trying to collect 
as much information as possible and then move forward and start to look at how those suggestions, how they overlap and see what sort of comes out of that picture. Mm -hmm. And the committee also agreed that uh, ARPA funding, ARPA, the ARPA, some of the ARPA monies would be justifiably spent on uh, pay, you know, covering the expenses of some of these outreach efforts. So we, we've approved, I think, was it up to $1,000? Is that right? I don't remember. We, we did some amount. It's I think they're going to go over that just in terms of adding all these up. I don't know if it's something that just needs to be brought to us at a further uh, at a future meeting to approve a higher amount or right. can they just put together what they need and, and put it to you, Val, and, and you make that decision. Does the board need to make the decision? I believe my spending authority is up to fifteen hundred dollars. OK. Yeah. I mean, with the, with the mailer, if it's a mailer to the entire town, that's going to be you know, that that'll get up to, you know, quite a bit in terms of designing the fire and then printing it and then mailing it. So we're going to and, and yeah, they were talking about return postage. Right. Oh, right. So, yeah, add that in. So we, it might be and have to be an agenda item where we approve uh, a certain yeah. amount up to 5000 or something like that. Right. Right. I, w I was curious because I didn't I didn't realize we'd budgeted any money for this. Yeah, and yeah. I was wondering where the money was coming from. <laughs> yeah, we, we previously actually, authorized them to spend, I think, up to a thousand um in terms of just incidental expenses or that something does like sound that. familiar yeah um but this is we're going to go over but i mean the money's there it can be used for these things so it, i don't think there's anything wrong with that it's just how how to get approval for that so that so they're able to spend and and use those funds to be able to work with work and do what they need to do um Ian. yes Ian. <laughs> Ian. you've got four of us shaking our head we don't remember none of us remember uh $1, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm okay. It's with not that. that we're opposed. We just don't. Right. None, none of us know. And, and like I said, I, when we started talking money for the spaghetti dinner and the flyers and all that, I was wondering what, what the budget was. So, okay. I, well, so Val and I remember it. So maybe, is it a conversation that Val and I are having? No, it, I'm sure it was discussed previously. Well, we can look back on that and confirm. And if, and if not, we'll obviously, we'll, we'll bring it up as a, at a, as a future agenda item to approve up to a certain amount. Okay. That works. We're, we're not, a, we're not opposed to it. We just, we just, it, didn't ring a bell. it seems odd that, that all four of us yeah. missed it. Yeah, I know. I know that, that does seem strange. Okay. Uh, I will, uh, I'll look at that. I'll look back at previous minutes. Okay. Uh, any other uh, updates for that, though? Uh, no. Okay. okay. Um, item eight: appointment or reappointment of town officers. Yes, uh, this is for the Addison County Regional Planning Commission. The both the, the the full board and the Transportation Advisory Committee, and also the Regional uh, Emergency Management Committee. And uh, so the Peter Grant agreed to be or yeah, agreed to be reappointed to the, the as a delegate. Uh, Bill Sayre agreed to be reappointed as an alternate delegate. Uh, I agree to be reappointed as the emergency management director and Peter Coffey agreed to be reappointed as the region, the emergency services representative. Great. Reappoint all five to the as president as printed in our agenda. Okay. It's a motion. We have a second. Second. That was Darla, I think. Uh, any yeah. further? Any further discussion? I'm on with this because you're talking. We can't even talk above anybody. Like usually, our screens highlight yellow when we're talking, and it just doesn't happen. So there's something going on. Our owl needs his ears cleaned. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'll, I'll take a look at that. Maybe it's like the network connection for that laptop or something like that. It's like delayed or I don't know. That's I that's just, odd. That's just too much right now. Is it, is it, it's, it's using the laptop that's usually sitting there, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like it's a really there's a delay. delay and voices are off. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Maybe I'll do some, uh, do some uh, troubleshooting on that. All right, we had a motion and a second for those appointees. Thank you very much for volunteering those appointees. 
Uh, any further discussion on that? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Raise your hand. Aye. Those against you. nay. And Ian, there are some forms on the front counter for the chair's signature. Okay. Motion carries. Yeah, they're not even picking me up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Okay, item nine, grant application authorization request, VTRANS Grants in Aid program. Yes, this is an annual program and the deadline is coming up quite quickly. Uh, it's now being administered through VTRANS. In years past, uh, the Regional Planning Commission uh, primarily administered it with uh, assistance from VTRANS, but now it's all VTRANS. And it's intended to help um, help uh, municipalities implement best management practices for height for hydro hydrologically connected road segments and bring them into compliance with the permits. And uh, this year, Bristol is eligible for up to fifteen thousand dollars in grant funding. There is a twenty percent match, uh, which would be over three thousand dollars if, if we spent the full amount. Where's that coming from? Now? I'm sorry. The match, where does that come from? Uh, it would probably come from a budget for it uh, out of the, the, the roads capital fund or uh, the, high, the highway department budget under, it, it can come from a lot of different sources depending on what the best management practice is that we're implementing, whether it's, if it's stone, if it's ditching, then it could come out of that budget line item or if it's other, some other kind of thing that's already in the, the operating budget, it can, can come out of different sections from there. Okay. Val, it's yes. 50, right? Is that the tops we can ask for? Yeah, that's the maximum. And it's 20% match or 25% match? 20% match. That's just $3,000, isn't it? Uh, 3750 No, that's 25%. 3750 is 25%. Hmm. Well, I was, looking, I was looking at the, uh, the table that came along with the... Uh, the information. They did it wrong. Kind of like, <laughs> like kind of like spelling uh, Munsell. Yeah. They did that. <laughs> yeah. The uh, the paperwork says 20 20 percent match, twenty percent local match, but the the um, the the uh, spreadsheet there that that came attached to it. Uh, gives the, to the total grant amount. Um, so the, if the uh, total project cost was 18,750, then the match would be 3,750, according okay. to this table. 15,000 and you 20% is on top of that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Whenever you go over that, you pay the difference. Right. Got it. Okay. All right. 750 yeah. is what we're asking for. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, all right, you got a motion. You have a second. Who is that, Peeker? Dang, this delay. We got to fix that. Okay, mm -hmm. motion the second. Made the motion originally. Joel. Joel did. Thank you. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. Raise your hand. All those against, nay. Hmm. Motion carries. All right, moving on. Item 10, minutes. <laughs> Val, Val is hiding, hiding her head in shame. Joel, are you gonna, are you gonna do, make your motion to approve all minutes that have ever been done ever? <laughs> Aaron, which ones did I just do? I did February 21st and what was the other one that I sent? Mm -hmm. I saw something come through late this afternoon, but I didn't get a chance to look at it. No, I didn't. No, I don't know. Yeah, You're yeah, muted, Sharon. Valerie, that was for the May 23rd that she's, that I did a uh, short and sweet, and she's added to it. Yours was a, a, an outline with, you know. Well, I gave the, the votes and a quick discussion. We didn't go into a lot of detail. 
Okay. So, which, which ones are not in draft form? Are they all in draft form? They're in draft form in the in the fact that they are like um, outline outlines, not detailed. Can we put them on the on the town website? Are they in Are they in a format that we can put up? We've put We've put some out there. Okay. Um, I make a motion that we approve August twenty third, September thirteenth, January seventeenth, January twenty fourth. February 7th, February 21st, February 28th, March 14th, March 28th, April 11th, April 25th, May 9th, and May 23rd, 2022 meeting minutes. I'll second it for discussion. Well, first okay. of all, January 17th, so that's off the list. Oh, well, I'm just right. approving, right. I'm just yeah. reading what was here. Yeah. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Further discussion on the minutes. I'm not willing to approve them in the form they're in. They're a draft form. They're not, they don't have enough detail on them to me to be put in final form. That's my personal opinion. Can we get them posted in draft? So they're at least yeah, Sharon can post them. Sharon, you're in, you're in mute, but you can post them as they are. We'll just, they'll just get amended once we, once yeah, that's what I did for May 23rd was I posted it and there was a question at the end because there was executive session. Um, let's see what else yeah. is out. You did February 21st, which is out there. Um, January 27th is done. January 24th, is that, was that a Thursday? There was one that Valerie did, but I don't know if it's out here. January 17th is out there in draft. January 10th is out there in draft. January 3rd, December, yeah. So. What's Bob been approved? I'm going to say, because yeah. you just dates January 10th and February. January 10th, 3rd. It's not on the list. January so, 10th, 3rd, and 17th have all been approved. Those have been approved already. Yeah, that's why okay. 17. Um, yeah. The 27th is out there. Oh, um, well, January. To be approved? That's already approved. Or has been approved. That's been approved. February 21st one is out there. When you say out there, so they've been approved. It's on the website. No, it's in draft. Right. Then why aren't they on here for review and approval? I guess that's my question. No, we approved January 17th minute last meeting. Or the meeting before, I can't remember which. February 21st, I just did sent to Sharon. So she put I believe she put them on the one's website. But I did That's one draft. other. It was it January 24th, the other one I did, Sharon, or was it one? I don't remember, but I did one. I, other I'll one. have to go back and look. I started a list trying to keep track of these things, but um well it looks like it looks like on the town website we're missing eight at the moment. And it, so if, if we have those in any any form uh, that's readable by the public, um, it would be great to just put those as as you've been doing just in a draft form. So they're up there and then we can start just chipping away uh, to approve them for final. I, I, I don't mind if the details not there because we have neat and we have the video links and I try to put the links in right in that table. Um, so if people want the detail, it's right there in the video. Um, but it'd be great to get them on the site in, in whatever yeah. form we can. I'd like, I'd like to get those those eight up there if we have them available. And then we can just start chipping away in terms of approving them. Okay. If that's, if that's okay. And if there are some that, that aren't in any form that you want to put up even as a draft, that's fine. Yeah. Just as long as we start filling those holes and then we can always go back and approve as long as there's something there. Because then I'd be able to find that uh, motion where we uh, allowed to ARPA to spend $1,000. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, unless it was just in my mind. <laughs> unless it was in January 24th minutes, because it says be. something. We made a motion on ARPA in that meeting, so it might have been there. Right, because if, if we don't, then I have to go back and watch the video of myself talking constantly, and I don't want to do that. <laughs> I mean, who, who's got time to do that? Um, OK, uh, so we have a motion in a second for approval, or at least in draft form, of all those minutes. Um, do we want to vote on this? Michelle said you weren't comfortable doing that. Are, are you voting for, would you be voting for draft form of those? 
Joel, is that what you're asking for? That form up? Yes. Put them okay. up. Okay. Okay. Put them up. Form? Okay. But approving okay. means approving those drafts, whether they're complete or not. I mean, I mean, like some of them are really incomplete. Right. Um, I mean, we, we don't need to approve them in draft form. We just, okay. just like, right. And then we'll make this we go through them. Right. Well, you find we find Right. And then we approve them. So as long as we're in draft form up there. Well, okay. So do, do we want to change that motion or vote against that motion and just say, just approve the one that was sent through today as to be, have that approved? So the way it works, the way it works, Ian, is you've got to we've we've, we've got to vote on that motion, and, and okay. in, order, in order to move on, we either have to vote it yay or nay. Okay. And, All right. And then, depending on what the outcome of that, we can go to the one that was posted today and accept that if we want. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, so all those in favor of the motion to approve all those minutes in draft form, uh, raise your. Sorry, Joel. <laughs> Joel. On mute? No. No, no, that's the thing. It's I don't know what's going on. Right. Someone knock that L. <laughs> Improving all these was in two weeks on the 27th on the agenda, we'd see review and approve June 13th minutes. We wouldn't discuss the rest of them anymore. They're up. They're done. Good, bad, or for difference. Well, they're not done. They'd be in draft form, so we'd still have to... No, he's saying he's saying yeah. approval. He wants it done. Yeah. Yeah. You are All right. Well, let's 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 vote on let's vote on Joel's motion, and see where that takes us. Uh, so, all those in favor of, of voting to approve all of those minutes uh, in their final form, raise your hand or say aye. In, in their final form. Well, yep. in as approved in terms of never revisiting them again. That's that's what Joel's motion is. Can so all those in, all those in favor of that say aye. Raise your hand. All those against, nay. 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 A motion. Ooh, motion. What's the word? Fail. Yeah. Motion fail. failed. Thank you. <laughs> I don't think I've done a motion failed before. Uh, motion failed. Uh, so do we want to revive? Uh, do a new motion then, Joel? I don't point. think I don't think we need to do a new motion. Okay. We technically, have to have the draft forms up right. in five days. So okay. We just post them the way they are, and we'll. Is there is them. there one that we can approve tonight? <laughs> is you there... have to ask Val that because I don't know where she's at. <laughs> the, the May twenty third was sent out late this afternoon. Okay, I didn't see it. Didn't see it. Okay, so it sounds like none none for approval this evening. But that one's certainly teed up for the next time. <laughs> That's good, Val. Think positive. All right. Let's uh, let's move on. Wait a minute, Ian. <laughs> Let me Back. pause and, and let's not move on. Michelle. Uh, one, do you need to then go back through them again just to compare with your notes? Who is that directed to? You. <laughs> no, I didn't hear all of it. Ones that I just did and sent out, which were the February 21st ones, and I did one other set. Are those something you have to go through? Not and necessarily. I haven't seen them. I haven't had a chance to open them yet. Okay. So we could have three for next meeting. Could have. Yeah. Actually, you could have uh, four because the August 20, I just looked at the August 23rd. And I was actually pretty well, pretty well through it. I just ran out of time. So that's up, that's almost ready. Okay. All right. Super. Perfect. All right. So, so for, so for next meeting, let's, let's remove that very long list and let's just put up those, the four that we're going to approve that we talked about tonight. So we don't have that giant list and yeah. then we'll start chipping away. Um, all right, moving on. All right. At 8.38, we've got uh, 11 authorized accounts payable warrant and any liquor licenses. There are no liquor licenses. Okay. No. The pay warrants are... Got them. She's gone. 
Now, if Joel wants to read it, he can. Yeah, we're, we're, we're lousy sit sound. $321,293.48. Wasn't me, all good. It wasn't old road salt or gravel. No, it was the school payment, sidewalk payment, $10,000 to Lake Oaks Mill for the West Street. Those were the big ones I added today. Okay. Uh, moving on. Good. Uh, item 12, select board roundtable. Michelle. I think I'm good. My complaints are already made to share last week. <laughs> okay, then. Uh, Darla. I don't have anything for this evening. All right. Joel. I have a couple of three or four things. <laughs> Um, the station, fire station, and Brett says I have to get permission from the select board. We, we, Lincoln Fire Department wants to plant a tree in memory of Darwin Kimball, and we've selected a spot for it on, on the 36th side to match the front to the back. And we, he said we just need permission. Brett's fine with it, just need permission from the board. And then we've had two. Uh, Christmas trees donated to us to plant out front so we can have something to decorate at Christmas time uh, from the board for the board. And as he Brett said, he's fine with that. He just needs permission because it's the town building and not his. So. And I want to send out another big thank you to Eric and the Highway Department for letting us. We didn't use their digger, but we used their truck to get that blue stone from Pikes. And then the firehouse drive trees. The ones south of the back parking lot, those in the that Wickham or not Wickham, Weston planted. The gypsy moss are tearing them up terrible, like they are all over the village. If you want, I'll go and put some tape around those small trees and try to slow the gypsy moss down from climbing into the branches. But they may be gone for this year. Those are they're chewing them like crazy. This is bad this year. They're, they're bad last yeah. year, but, so, really bad but I got some year. tape at home I could use and and stuff to put around those five or six trees. You just use a duct tape? Uh, yeah, in a form yeah, way. Much, yeah. And then put some axle grease around the duct tape and then they hit that axle grease. Seems like that first tree in my front yard and put one on the ground too. <laughs> okay. They're eating that up like crazy. And then I think Brett sent you, Valerie, some pictures of that last catch basin on the left going down the end of Firehouse Drive where it's sinking. Two, the last two. The last two. Oh, I'm sorry, Vicar. Sinking? The catch base is not around it. The pavement sunk. Oh. So I guess you're probably addressing. <laughs> Why is the basin you're, sinking? You're <laughs> with Weston, probably in the engineer, Valerie. Yeah, he's he's been notified. Val's notified him. And, and Kevin Harper knows as well. And hopefully Don seemed like he'd be jumping right on that. Yes, he did. Yeah. He responded very quickly. I haven't been out there. Apparently, it hasn't been dealt with yet, maybe because of the rain. Um, but he said he'd be on it. Then what? something. What? And then, do we need a motion for the tree planning? And yeah. the well, we can't, we can't do that. It's on this, so I'm just bringing it up. And whether I put it on the next meeting or not, mm -hmm. that will be Brett's. Okay. So, okay. In terms of, I had a question about that in terms of people knowledgeable, which might be peaker. What causes the sinking of asphalt? Is it just like it's not what was put underneath wasn't properly done or other other environmental issues? It apparently didn't get compacted when it was when it was backfilled. OK. Did them both. And that's 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 the issue. Okay. You know, and then the water in there and the, we're actually fortunate that, that the water got in there and settled it because it could have been years before it happened. And at least this way it'll be taken care of as warranty work. Right. And then, okay. and then the last thing I had was, and it actually came up just, I wrote it down tonight for the, when we were talking sidewalks and it's not picking on the sidewalks down on West street, the one that was holding the water. But I think we have to be more observed when we, when someone paves a driveway between the, the green in the green space to up to the sidewalk to the edge of the road that it has what i'll call a swale in it so our water won't run down our side it won't be coming onto our sidewalk but I mean, you can always take care of it with gravel but you can't take care of it after they pave it driveway i think as a board and the road forming i think we need to be more 
knowledgeable. When someone paves the driveway in the green space, we should know about it so we can tell them. Make sure the slope is right. The slope is but correct. They don't have to come in for a permit. Just gonna say, how do you I don't think that? so. I don't know. So maybe that's something we need to talk about. Well, they technically, they only should get a in the right of way permit. permit. Right. <laughs> happens or not. Right. Exactly. exactly. They're supposed to. A lot of people yeah, don't know, and it's you know, uh -huh. if the contractor it's a learning curve, if the contractor doesn't know, they're just going to go ahead and do it. So potentially with Richards, that swale is not there. I mean, the lowest point is at the to the left of it, and it's hitting our sidewalk. Any potential for like creating a swale in that little piece of asphalt where the water is going to sit on that and not hit our sidewalk, or is that not going to work? Uh, like a ditch over in between the two ends that all that would do though was get the water Eric, underneath and break it down wouldn't it? yeah eric's gonna kill me <laughs> but he has he has a saw and he could saw on an angle from that low spot and take that section out take the dirt out and then and then he pats it I mean, yeah, but what would that do? Like, it would it would send that water that's setting there in the sidewalk. It would send that's what he said earlier. It would send that water that's setting right there to the green space, and then when he took care of the green space, it would take it the rest. But of the if way. you re, if you cut it out, take the dirt out, and repave it, then what? Lower. Oh, you're saying oh, you're saying you put a swale in there. Yeah. But that's a, that's probably a twenty five hundred dollar <laughs> job. That little well, it, it, he's looking to strangle you. Yeah, I know he is. <laughs> You know, if, if if we want to fix that problem so that the, the water doesn't sit on the sidewalk, that's our answer. Either take either take the whole thing out and swale it, or or cut a V out and swale that one little section. So what's gonna what's gonna break down first, his sidewalk or our or, or our sidewalk or his pavement? With if the water sits there, pavement. So do we go to him and say you want to split the cost? But is the issue a liability issue come winter when it freezes? I see. That's my concern. That's more of a town issue to me than it is his driveway. You know, where you get that in a lot of places. I mean, I'm not town, not blaming Richard. He put that in, or somebody before him maybe put, put it in. in. But I think from this point forward, we need to make sure there's a swale and I'll call this green space if it's going to be paved. In the right way. In the right way. There's got to be a swale in that driveway. The water, so, the water situation has to be taken into consideration when you pave your driveway right. it may not need a swale it may all pitch right to, yeah it may pitch to the road it may pitch away from the road i mean you don't want to put a swale if you don't need it right i'm not saying we do that down there let's see getting the green space cut down with slope i think we'll take care of 95 percent of the problem okay and i i think peaker's peaker's suggestion it is a good one in terms of perhaps fixing that. I know Eric's probably not too excited about that, but I do know that that the homeowners would probably be very grateful not to have standing water right on their sidewalk. I know that they, they do a lot of gardening right there. Obviously, people are walking there. So I think, you know, my guess is that they would probably prefer to have that water sit and hopefully drain and sit in that little driveway area versus having it sit right on the sidewalk right by their house. So if we're if we're able to fix that, I think that would be a positive thing. For us and and the homeowner, is Pike Sun? I'll look at you now. Sun <laughs> down? <laughs> no, they'll actually move it in tomorrow, and they'll finish tomorrow. So you don't have time to pull it oh, out and have them do it. I mean, if that was the case, I'd pull the whole thing out and have them do it. That's exactly what I'm going to do, anyways. I'm going to I'm going to rip that whole thing out. Okay. Cut it by the road, and then rip it out, and then reshape it, and then. Have you come down and pave it? Perfect. Okay. I love it. Thank you, Eric. Sure you communicate with Richard. Well, <laughs> yes, the other yeah. thing, too, is if, if we're doing it to help out the homeowner. No, we're doing it to dry our sidewalk. To dry our sidewalk out. But can he move his planings away from the sidewalk so that way we don't have to run into him with a plow every winter? We can ask. No, he's got, doesn't he have a he's brick? A There's he's a got border. A brick There's brick a big border. There's border a big there. border that goes around there. And we get that with the stone, block, stone plow all the time. And it pushes us off sidewalk. Well, sidewalk's wider now. Uh, it's, it's wider and he's got pressure treated wood, right, as the border. 
<clears throat> yes, he does there, but I know you're not. We're not doing Mount Street, but Mount Street is the worst one. Okay. Can't okay. In the sidewalk no, because of them boards, yeah. where his planting is going up through there. When you get your angle plow, it won't be an issue. Oh no, we won't have no fence left. We'll take care of that. Right? There can be <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Let's not get any more dangerous equipment for Eric. Okay, um, that sounds great. And I'd be happy to talk to Richard about and just mention mention the driveway and the repair. Um, I know him, so I'd be happy to mention to him uh, if you don't get to that, Eric, at whatever time, or if I happen to see him or his wife. Um, Joel, and yep, any, <laughs> any other things, Joel? Saying I didn't mean to go and change that there, that little bit of puddle doesn't really bother me. That little puddle right there that I saw in the sunshine or after the rain stopped. It's very small from what we have other places. But going forward, I'm yeah. just saying going, forward, we should make sure if they apply for working in a right away permit and they're going to pave their driveway, that we get it swelled properly from the in the green space. So how do we educate right. our community think, to know to ask for that? And I and I and I think we have to mitigate this problem. We don't want water sitting on that sidewalk. We just board a view from the sidewalk. Yep. Yeah. We and, and Dyla's concern about, you know, springtime, late fall, early spring, freeze and thaw. I, I just think at this point, we should have dealt with it when we put it out the bid. We didn't. We need to fix it. And I agree. I agree with that, Peter. And Joel, I agree with you. I do think if we can, we can be proactive on that when people apply and just have a little bit of wording in terms of what's required, I think that would be great. Going over and ditch in the green space in front of the dentist's office on the back of Park Street, in the Park Street, because we've got a beautiful sidewalk. We're not tearing it up just to raise it up. Um, I'd like to try that down here, what Eric wants to do. Give it a month or two. If it doesn't work, say, Richard, in the spring, we're going to pay, we're going to tear out your driveway and, and put a swale in there. Okay. I think that's fine. And, and is that confirmed that we're doing that at the, at the dentist's office? We're, we're going to be able to do work a little bit out in the green. No, aren't we just going to cut that here? You said you just peel it off. Going to peel it off the dentist's office. No okay. replacement. Okay. Yeah, because I I spoke with them and that was their main concern. They you know it was just mitigating the water that builds up there, and they they didn't they didn't mind whether it was just taken care of uh, in another way other than yeah. laying a new sidewalk. So, but that was the main concern. So if we're able to do that and not have to tear up that sidewalk, I think that would be great. No. All right, uh, Joel. Do you have anything else? Funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Peeker. I'm good. And I am also good. All right, uh, town administrator's report. Well, the only thing I uh, have to update on is the West Street project. Uh, folks might have noticed some truck activity this week up there uh, at uh, 25 West Street. The Long Reach excavator and the smaller excavator with the thumb are both in the backyard back there. And a dump truck will be backing in through the driveway to uh, be loaded with the debris that the Long Reach uh, um, excavator is pulling up from the from down below and the the excavator with the thumb is pulling it into the dump truck so that'll take about uh, the three or four days depending on the weather and then when that when that job is done the long reach uh, excavator is going to be going around to the bottom uh, through the late thrips mill and they'll be doing the same operation from below pulling the stuff off from the the slope down to where the the other excavator with the thumb can reach it and pull it into a dump truck to be taken away so uh, that's happening and uh, the work down below on the river is getting started uh, with the laying the roadway to get across the river and keying in um, the stone to stabilize the area so that the long reach and the other excavator can get in there and th that's what i know so far um, and i'm not exactly sure how long the project is expected to go uh, once the excavators are down at the bottom uh, I think the the top the yeah the top stuff needs to be stabilized first before they can work at the bottom, and that's all I have. Terrific. Okay. Thank you very much, Val. Uh, other business correspondence reports correspondence received. 
I'd like to draw your attention to the correspondence received from Sylvia Coffin, uh, thanking the select board and Ian for the new uh, welcome to Bristol signs. And there are no, there are a number of other items uh, listed under the other business. Okay, super. Uh, hey, uh, are we yellow yet? I spoke with Sylvia's or Sylvia's daughter spoke with me, and she says, "Well, now, Mom, you created this mess. Now you've got to send them a thank you." <laughs> 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 no, Sylvia did not create it. It was it was known before Sylvia brought it up. She she reminded us that it needed to be fixed. <laughs> But though I read the letter, it was very nice. I'm very appreciative of that, and uh, I think the new signs look great. And I've had good good feedback from from those who have noticed them. <laughs> hey, Bruce, Bruce I, I know you're still. I just want a quick question. I see that we have a license issued for the Vermont CCB, and I read that and they were talking about regulations for the town. Is there any consideration or concerns that we need to? take into place here that the state hasn't already considered in all their regulations. I'm sorry, in what license? The um, retail license for CBD. Cannabis. Um, cannabis. cannabis. Yeah. Um, I don't think so, but I, I'll have to review. I don't remember. I just, you know, it kind of said, you know, the town just had to be, you know, keep an eye on something about if it does, if they're not complying with our own town regs or policies. And I was like, Oh well, should we cons do we have to consider any, or is the state's rights enough that you know we don't have to worry about it? I'll review it and get back to you. Okay, thank you, Bruce. Uh, we have executive session tonight. Correct, and I know that at least Sharon and Anthony would like to be invited. Uh, I don't know if Eric uh, it has anything that he'd like to meet with the select board about. I can convey I can convey the update that he shared with me this morning, um, but I don't know if there's anything else. He, he's trying to think what he shared with you this morning. Oh yeah, yeah. no, 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 no. I remember what I told him this morning. I'm good with that. Same thing you told me. Yep. So do you need to come and do that kind of thing? Um. Do you say no, so you don't. <laughs> yeah, I'd say no. <laughs> I can't say until we go in the Well, I'll go in and then I'll tell you if I need to say it. Go ahead. Hey, I'll make a motion that we enter executive session to discuss personnel matters and contract negotiations too, Val? No, I don't think so. From BSA 13, I invite Anthony and Sharon to and Eric possibly to attend. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, motion, uh, we have a second. Speaker, fifth. Thank you. All those in favor, aye. Raise your hand. Aye. Right. All those against, nay. Motion carries. We're in executive session. Thank you very much, very much, everyone, for attending hey. this evening. All right. Recording off. I'm trying off. to. <laughs> <laughs>